Hey there y'all. In this video we're going to go over the step-by-step -step process to tan a bear skin. Uh, the same procedure will also work for any other mammal, you know, deer, foxes, bobcats, coyotes, etc. And um, I'm not going to kid you, it is a little bit of work involved and it is time consuming, but it is very rewarding as a do-it-yourself project. And if you're on a budget like me, it's a great way to preserve your trophy uh, at, at a very small expense. So let's get started. Alright, so what I'm working on today is going to start the process of tanning a bear skin. Um, this is a bear that I got in uh, last year in archery season. I had it in the freezer. So I've got it and thawed it out. And uh, the first step is going to be to spread it out and do the fleshing of the skin. Probably the most important step is getting as much of the flesh off the skin and getting the skin as thin as you can. So let's start doing that. Now you might notice that the skin looks a little dirty. Um, that's because I had to skin the bear out in the field. I had to pack it out. I couldn't get the whole bear out by myself out of the woods so I skinned it in the woods and of course I got a little bit of leaves and dirt on it which isn't going to matter because once I start scraping and fleshing up all that will come off. Alright so here's what the bare skin looks like before I start any work on it. You can see that there's meat on there. All that has to come off. Alright, so it really helps keeping your knife good and sharp. I use a ceramic rod for this job. I can get the knife really sharp quick with that. And also, I use several types of knives, but I really like this one with the curved blade for this fleshing job. So you see what I'm doing right here is just carefully cutting that. I want to get it down as thin as I can. The thinner you get that skin, the better it's going to tan and the softer it'll be. And this is a very time consuming part of the job. All right, now one part of this that's really important is what's called splitting the ears. So to do that, what basically what we're doing is we want to split the skin off of the cartilage so that our tanning solution will get up inside there properly. So I'll show you how to do that. Got to really be careful. I use a razor knife for that and what I'm going to do is cut that skin right off of that cartilage. you can see the skin is black right there it's very very thin right there so what I'm basically doing there is I've got it split now where I can get my fingers all the way up into the ear right here and that way the tanning solution and the salt will go up in that ear Alright now, so another very important part of the tanning process is the salting. So we've got our, tan our hide um, pretty much fleshed off. I'm going to flesh it again after salting, but I got it clean enough that I'm going to go ahead now and salt it. And it's important to salt every surface, all ed around the edges, and you want to get it on real heavy. So I'm going to pour the salt on. I 
I'm going to rub it in real good all the way to the edges of the skin. And by the way, we're using plain salt, not iodized salt. So what I do is, like I got that leg right there salted, now I'm going to kind of roll it up. And I can move to another section. And again, it's real important to get the edges. So, and then once we get that coat, like I said, we're going to keep rolling it, like so. All right, so earlier we talked about where we split these ears. Now there's what they look like when they've been split. Basically their ears are turned inside out. So we're gonna we want to salt that real well all inside the head. And especially up there in the nose. Okay, so I got the skin salted. I'll fold it up here. I've got it set up on a couple of pieces of wood here where to sit it at an angle so the liquid can drain out. And this is a very important step because now the skin is salted, it's protected. It'll keep the hair from slipping. So you're good now if you need uh, more time. You can wait even a few days as long as it's salted like this for you. Uh, pick up, uh, work on it again, and start the pickling process, which is next. All right, so our next step is going to be pickling the hide. And the pickling solution consists of salt, plain salt, not iodized, and citric acid. For a large skin like a bear, we need at least five gallons. So I've got five gallon bucket here full of water. I've already measured out the water. And we're gonna do our pickling in a tote because we have more room for the skin to lay in there and be exposed to the chemical. Uh, plastic tote like this works good. Also a large trash can works good. But you don't wanna put it in too small a container uh, because the, the skin will be folded up too much and the solution won't get on all the surfaces. So the basic mixture is per gallon of water three ounces of citric acid and one pound of salt so we're using five gallons and we're going to need five pounds of salt and uh, 15 ounces of citric acid which I have a little one ounce measuring cup I've already measured it out into this container right here and the mixing is pretty simple we're just going to pour everything in there all right so I got my five pounds of salt in there and I'm gonna pour in my citric acid now I want to mix that real good um, it can be a little difficult to get all that salt dissolved it might take five minutes of stirring. All right, I got that stirred up real well. I can see that all the salt is dissolved. Now, one thing that's really important here is you should be fine if your mix is correct, but the pH is critical. So well, I've got some little test strips to check the pH. It's very, very simple. I'm basically just gonna take this little test strip and I'll show it to you close here in a minute. I'm going to dip it in my liquid. So if you look, the test strip turned a bright red. And right there is a little chart that shows the different colors relative to the pH. And you want this pickling to be between 1 and 2. 
So as you can look right there, you can see that's uh, about a, somewhere between one and two. It looks like a two. So I'm, I'm good. Again, this is a real simple method, test strip. Uh, and you can get these on Amazon or, or other places, but uh, they're very inexpensive. All right, so now that my pickle is made, I've checked the pH, I'm going to put the skin in there. You want to be careful with this stuff. It is highly acidic. Uh, it's a good idea to wear some good gloves. Now we want the pickle solution to totally cover the hide and a lot of times the skin tries to float up so I usually put a brick on there or a couple bricks to hold it down so that it stays submerged. got a couple bricks right here I'll lay on there and that'll keep holding it down so it doesn't float up okay so the pickling for a large hide like a bear especially a thick hide is going to take 72 hours I'm going to leave it in there and in about 12 hours or so I'll pull it out and I'll shift it around so that I can make sure that if there's anywhere in there that the skin is folded and the solution's not getting in there good I'll change the position of it and I'll probably do that about every 12 hours during the pickling process another thing we're going to do is about halfway through pickling we're going to take the hide back out spread it back on the table and we're going to try to shave the skin a little more the reason we do that at, during the pickling is the pickling itself makes the hide swell and it makes it a lot easier to shave it and what we're going to try to do is we'll try to shave off any real thick areas because ultimately the, the, the best skin finished product is going to be where a thin skin and anytime you get it thin it's a lot easier to get soft. If the skin is real thick it takes a lot of work to soften it up. So what I'm going to do is just pull the skin up out of there. And just change the position of it. And then again, we want to make sure that it's totally submerged. So we'll put these bricks on there to kind of push it down into the liquid because it will try to float up. Alright, so about 24 hours or so into the pickling process, we want to pull the skin out. And another important step is shaving. And basically what that is, is we're going to take and shave the skin and try to get it thin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right here and I can hang that skin on there let it drain back into my toes so I'll let that sit there a few minutes and drain and then uh, we'll get it up and start doing some uh, shaving on it alright so I got the skin up on the table here and uh, got a couple different knives this type of a blade works really good for shaving and because uh, I like the curve and then also this blade with the curve and of course I got my sharpening rod so I'm gonna start taking some of that excess skin off
this is kind of a, a tedious process and slow. So we are done with our pickling. It's been 72 hours and I've got the skin out of the tote. Now what we want to do is degrease the skin. And uh, this is another important step. Some skins are more oily than others. A bear is an oily skin. A uh, beaver, a raccoon, they're oily skins. A deer is not quite as oily. Uh, Foxes and bobcats are not quite as oily, but you still need to degrease. With the bear, we're going to put it in the degrease solution, and we're going to leave it for like 30 minutes. Uh, and it's pretty simple. All we use is Dawn dish soap. So we're going to put some soap in our tote right there. We're going to use about five gallons of water again. Of course, we'll stir that up. Now we'll just put our skin right down into that coat. We'll come back in 30 minutes. Go to the next step. Okay, now we are finished with our degreasing. And I pulled the skin out of the solution with the uh, Dawn dish detergent and I uh, dumped that. Now the next step is neutralization. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a simple mixture of water and baking soda. And what that does is that neutralizes the citric acid that was in the pickle. And um, pretty simple. Like I say, plain old baking soda, and we're going to put one ounce of baking soda for one gallon of water. And for this bear skin, I'm using five gallons every time for my different steps. So we're going to go ahead and put that baking soda in there. We'll add our five gallons of water. in there. Make sure it gets covered up good in the water. Alright, so we're going to leave the skin in the neutralizer for 20 minutes. Okay, we've had the bare skin in our neutralizer for 20 minutes. Now it's time to take it out of there. And what we're going to do, we're going to take it out and we're going to hang it right here and let it dry a little bit because the next step we're going to take it back inside and we're going to apply the tanning chemical but before i do that i need for the fur to dry a little bit before it's real wet all right so i got it laid out here where it can dry a little bit uh it's real windy it's up we're up on top of a mountain here it's been windy for like three days but um, with the wind blowing, it should dry out probably about an hour or so. And so after that, I'll take it in and we'll start the next step. Okay, so I had the skin outside and we let it dry. Not all the way. You still want it to be damp. But I brought it in and now I've spread it out on my work surface you uh, need the skin to be laying flat when you put the tanning chemical on so you need a pretty large surface depending on the size of your hide of course all right what we're going to do now is we're going to apply our tanning solution to the skin and what this does is basically the tanning chemical changes the skin into leather and I'll show you what I'm using. I've tried a couple different products. Uh, this one is called Curatan. 
and it's sold by Van Dykes, which is a taxidermy supply company. I've had good results with that. And today we're going to use one called New Tan. Uh, it's a similar product, and I've had good results with that in the past as well. And these products can be bought at outdoor supply stores, uh, sporting goods stores, taxidermy supply stores, and other places online. So, applying it is very simple. I'm going to just pour it on and then take my gloved hand and rub it in. We want to make sure we get it all the way to the edges real good. And um, like on this bear, up in these claws, we want to get it up in the, the nooks and crannies. It's really, really important to get it all covered really well. So I'm just going to pour some on right here like so. And I'm going to rub it in. Like I say, I want to make sure I get it all the way over to my edges. All right, I've got my entire skin coated with the tanning chemical now. And it's going to take one to two days of drying for that to soak in. So we're going to come back and look at it though periodically as it dries. We're going to do some stretching uh, to try to keep the skin soft. So that'll be our next step. Okay, it's been about 24 hours now since we put our tanning chemical on the skin. And as I mentioned earlier, it takes about two days to 48 hours for it to fully dry. But you can see right here where the skin is changing color. And that's where the chemical is leatherizing the skin. Uh, you can see the darker areas it hasn't dried yet. So we still got a good ways to go. But when it starts changing, that's when I'm going to start working the skin by stretching. What this does is help keep it soft. And also folding and bending. And the more you work this skin during this process, the softer it will be. Alright, now if you look, our skin is done with the tanning. Uh, I've had the tanning chemical on there uh, about two days. And it's finally all soaked in. And you can see where the skin now has turned to leather. Uh, but it's stiff. So now the tanning is done, but we need to try to soften it up. And you can do this as much or as little as you want. It depends on what you're going to do with the skin. Uh, for example, if you wanted to like hang the skin on the back of a couch or lay it on a table, you'd probably want it to be pretty soft so it would lay nicely. But if you were going to hang it on the wall, uh, it, it could be a little stiff. So what I'm going to do, and I've, and I've been working on it a little bit as, as I went along, but I want to stretch it. Um, another method that works really well is if you can put the skin over on a table or a sawhorse I actually works well too. You can take the skin and what you can do is you can work it over this edge and that really helps soften it up. Just do a section at a time, like so. And like I say, it does take some time, but you can do it that way. Another thing that helps, I'm going to show you. Is you can sand on the skin and I've got just here a simple sanding block and I'm using a real coarse paper it's like a I think it's an 80 grit paper but you can sand it and that also helps break the fibers So 
So anyway, hopefully you get the idea there. So our skin is done, like I say, except for the softening part. And um, now another thing is when I put the tanning chemical on, uh, sometimes you'll get a little bit of the of the of the tanning chemical on the hair side, like around these edges or around the claws or around the entrance hole of your, of your bullet or arrow. Uh, that's not a problem. You can take soap and water on a rag and just scrub it and clean it up and I'll have to do that on this. But there we go. Hair skin all tanned. Alright, this is just a quick review of the materials you'll need. First, you'll need a large container. You'll need salt. Citric acid. Baking soda. Dish soap, pH test strips, a sanding block and some sandpaper, and your tanning chemical. Alright, so I didn't want to spend any more time in the video uh, working on the softening of this one. I think you probably have the idea from what I've showed you. But here's one that I did last year. And I just want to show you how it comes out when you finish your softening. This one I sanded the skin real well and worked it a lot. And you can see that it's very pliable, very soft. And a skin like this will lay nicely on a table. And that's what I'll do with this one eventually when I finish the softening process.